Ladies and gentlemen, this is the 145th annual luncheon meeting, and I'm just absolutely delighted you're here. I would like to begin, if I could, by asking uh, our judges who are present today if they would please stand so that we can all acknowledge them and give them a round of applause for the great work that they do. Yeah, what were you waiting for? And if, if we have some uh, elected officials in the House, I would love for them to stand too, and we could give them a round of applause. Ah, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And would you please, we have some Bar Association presidents, other Bar Association presidents here. Would you please stand so we can acknowledge you as well? Jim McCluskey and others, thank you. And I have a self-interest in the next group, the Chicago Bar Association past presidents. If they could rise so we give them a round of applause. Um, you should feel free, uh, as I know you probably already have done, to begin eating your salad or your dessert, whichever you like to start with at these things. Because I don't know that you're going to be getting many breaks. Uh, we have some uh, things to get through. But before I go a, an inch further, I'd like to take a personal moment and acknowledge my dear family members who are here, beginning with my daughter, Heather Guillen. Could you please rise and say hello? and her husband, Tom Gian. And I was caught in the rain this morning and completely soaked through to the bone. Worse, the creases in my pants were lost. So I called my wife, my dear wife of, get this, 49 years. And I said, would you please bring me another suit? So how do I look? Elaine, would you please stand up? Say, give your round of applause. And I would like to introduce our dais to you, but before I do that, I would like to ask uh, Rabbi Lowenstein a theological question. Uh, it's raining cats and dogs out there, and I know that you have some flood experience in your religion. Don't you think it's a bad omen that it's raining so hard today? And maybe we shouldn't change horses after all. No, after, Carrie, the rain, after the rain comes the rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> um, first of all, Carrie DeSanto, would you say hello down at the very end? Uh, I'm introducing the dais now. Stay with me. Maurice Grant is sitting next to her. Our outgoing treasurer did a wonderful job, by the way. Thank you again, Maurice, for the great work you did. And uh, our new justice, Scott Neville, please say hello. You can give him a round of applause. Nice job. And there's our incoming treasurer, um, uh, Tim Tomasic. And then Rabbi Lowenstein, who's fuzzy on theology, is next. Um, and our dear friend, Justice Bauer. Hey, Bill. Uh, Jesse Ruiz, our first uh, vice president. <laughs> Judge Diane Wood. <laughs> Justice Ann Burke, right next to me. <laughs> and all the way down at the end is our wonderful executive director, Terry Murphy. Uh. Next to him is Ken Wright. Brandon Peck, uh, chair of our Young Lawyers section. <laughs> Mariam Ahmad, who is our second, uh, incoming second vice president. <laughs> and uh, Chief Judge Tim Evans. <laughs> Justice Thomas Kilbride. <laughs> Chief Justice Ruben Castillo. And now I'd like to ask Jeff Marks uh, whether I have forgotten anyone on the dais, and, and if so, whether he could help me out. Jeff and 
Jeff and the um, people that he have with them are bar show thespians and have a little couple ditties for us. Well, yes, thank you. Uh, you please eat. Um, so, you know, before I bring up uh, some people to sing two songs about Steve, I want to tell you that Terry Murphy is the one who put all those little uh, flyers on your chairs about the bar show. And I want you to know that Terry's uh, flyers say, quote, show your appreciation and connect with clients at the bar show. Nice, but that's not the phrase that I gave him. I said, what, you don't want to keep your clients? I think mine was a little harsh, but here's the point. Um, clients often tell attorneys that they have heard of the bar show or many, many years ago were taken as guests to the bar show. And it's a great way to keep and entertain your clients. This is your, the CBA's bar show. So please uh, think about uh, keeping your clients by buying tickets and bring them to the bar show. Up for our first uh, number is Cliff Berman, one of our chief head writers. Cliff, come on up. Brad McDonald is at the piano. Thanks, Jeff. It's a pleasure to be here, uh, celebrate with Steve. Steve and I have a little bit of history. We both grew up, part of our youth was spent in Lincolnwood. We actually both went to Niles West High School, and he was a couple classes ahead of me, but we shared the stage, the same stage in the musical Applause in 1976. So Steve is a thespian, <laughs> and we will, I've written a couple parodies for him today, and I'll sing the first one. Brad? In the president's room are their photos, rows and rows of our past leaders' photos. It's getting so crowded there isn't much room, but a smiling new face will be joining them soon. Steve Elrod's gonna be sworn in to lead our own CBA. I've got a beautiful feeling everything's going our way. In the bar show they stand there like statues. Our past presidents stand there like statues. They sing junior partners, but mostly off-key. But Steve Elrod will master that old melody. Steve loves to see us performing. He's got our back all the way. Now all the cast can breathe easy. We'll reach 100 someday. Oh, what a beautiful day. Thank you. Thank you. Jeff's going to come back up, and with him, Kate Kelly, longtime cast member and steering committee member. What's good is sitting and practicing law 24 hours a day. You're needed right this way, old chum. Come lead the CBA. Put down the billing, the marketing too. Give it a rest, okay. Your wish we will obey, old chum. Come lead the CBA. Come make a speech. Come give a toast. Come, Come chair the board, board. start delegating. Right this way, your, your gavel's waiting. waiting. So many colleagues right here in this room have selflessly led the way. Grab the baton today, old chum. Come lead the CBA. 
Steve runs Holland's and Night Chicago's office. But he's a normal guy, he's not standoffish. He doesn't sit up in some ivory tower. As a matter of fact, he charges by the hour. He spent his youth in Lincolnwood and Skokie. A good boy, he was never in the pokey. And when he starred in Fiddlers at Niles West, Mottel the tailor wearing a stylish vest. <laughs> he thinks of Mottel to this very day. Well, at least he thinks what Mottel would say. Wonders of wonders and miracles too. I am so blessed, oy vey. I'm gonna pay it back, my friends, here at the CBA. And as for me, and as for me, one to do a swell job, we're in luck. We've got Stephen L. Rod. Watch as he kicks off a new winning way. It's in his DNA. If curveballs come your way, old chum, throw back a Cabernet, old chum. Just come lead the CBA. How about it? How about that? Oh, mark your calendars. Go to the bar show this year. It's absolutely fabulous. Um, I uh, have very have been given careful scripts. I've been told what to say. Uh, I've been carefully rehearsed, and I went up and down the dais in a very smooth way and introduced everybody except my oldest friend, Lynn Grayson, who I forgot to introduce. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Rabbi Lowenstein. <clears throat> That's a tough act to follow. Thank you, Bar Show. One of my favorite teachings says that if you want to go fast, go alone. And if you want to go far, go together. In this 145th luncheon of the CBA, you're going to go far together with so many wonderful people in this room prepared to make a difference. With the peaceful transition of leadership between these two wonderful people that I stand between, with outgoing president, Judge Thomas Mulroy, to incoming president, Steve Elrod, we are truly blessed. A great teacher, Hillel, once said, in a place where no one behaves like a human, strive to be one. And more recently, Elie Wiesel said, there may be times when we are powerless to prevent injustice, but there must never be a time when we fail to protest. Strive to be human. Work to prevent injustice. Protest. As lawyers, as judges, you are all commanded to pursue justice, not just wait for justice to come to you. Justice is not an abstract term and not used to refer to punishing the guilty or acquitting the innocent. It means setting up a society in which people, all people are, tr are treated fairly and equally, in which the rich and the poor are treated alike, and where there's one law for everyone and no one, no one is excluded. The Chicago Bar Association is so lucky to have leaders like Thomas and Steve who share the responsibilities of leadership, who pursue justice in all that they do, who treat all people fairly and equally, and who surround themselves with capable individuals to share this responsibility. Today our blessings are overflowing. The blessings of teamwork, of vision, the blessing of hard work and justice, the blessing of friendship and community. May we all continue to be inspired to 
repair our world, to help each other work to make this bar association even better. I know Steve loves baseball. A great baseball player, Roberto Clemente, once said, any time that you have the opportunity to make a difference in this world and you don't, then you're wasting. You're wasting your time on this earth. Life is not made up of years, but of moments. Far more important than counting our years or making our moments count. For Steve, for the entire Elrod family, this is one such moment. A moment Steve has worked so hard to achieve, a moment in which his father, the Honorable Dick Elrod, would have been so incredibly proud for the important work of this organization. <laughs> and for our opportunity to make our world better, we offer this prayer. Oh God, on this important day, give us a quiet heart and help every single one of us to hear the still small voice that speaks within us. As members of the Bar Association, I pray that in this next year, you will all hope more than you fear, listen more than you talk, give more than you take, pray more than you curse, build more than you knock down, seek more than you ignore, trust more than you doubt, reach more than you settle, praise more than you criticize, and continue to be grateful for our world, for our amazing legal system. Pursue justice, strive to be human, protest, and work to make our city, our state, our country, and our world even stronger. Amen. Thank you, Rabbi. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're continuing to eat because this is a meeting. We have to turn to business right away. And the once forgotten woman but now resurrected Lynn Grayson will come up and read our minutes. You know what, I would prefer to think as myself as not the forgotten woman, but the fact that my diet is working and Judge Mulroy couldn't see me down there. So I think being a person that believes in every glass is half full, that's the way to think about that. So. Um, I would like to congratulate Judge Mulroy on a wonderful year that he's had, and and we're all looking forward to the wonderful year that we know that Steve is going to have as well, and thanks again to all of you for being here. When you're the Chicago Bar Association Secretary, probably the most important job you have is at the annual meeting, and so I'm pleased to be here today. I have reviewed, prepared, revised, and I am ready to go with the 52 pages of minutes from the 2017 annual meeting. Um, and I'm looking forward to starting um, reading through them. I think it should only take me maybe two, two and a half hours. I've timed myself, and I think I'm, I'm on a good pace, and I'm ready to go. So unless I hear a motion... <laughs> Second. So I do believe I've heard a motion. I'm really disappointed, but I've heard a motion. I think I've heard a second. And with that, we'll dispense with reading the minutes. They are approved. Um, we've had a, 20, a wonderful 2017, and I will turn the podium back over to Judge Mulroy. And ladies and gentlemen, our next order of business is the Treasurer's Report from our Treasurer, Maurice Grant. Good afternoon, everyone. I see they're about to serve the food, and who wants to talk about money and food at the same time? I, I want your lunch to stay down. So, very briefly, the CBA had revenues over $6 million for this last fiscal year. Our fiscal year runs from June to June, for everyone that knows that, or that doesn't know that. Uh, the CBA received better than expected membership dues collections, so th that's a good sign. Uh, but nevertheless, our rate decreased by 1.4%, but that's actual, an actual improvement over the previous year where 
membership decreased by 4.3%. So hopefully we're seeing signs that things will stabilize, at least financially, for the CBA, and I have more notes about that in just a quick moment. From the expense side, overall the expenses exceeded revenue by 0.7%. So the, for those of you who are mathematically challenged, at least uh, less than 1%. And the CBA kept expenses relatively in check with only a 0.5% increase while still increasing revenue. I and mean, that's mostly due to the organizational changes that we've made in the last year uh, to better accommodate the needs of the CBA. Now, for the really good news, the CBA retired the mortgage on their portion of the CBA building in January 2018. I think that deserves a standing ovation. Congratulations. That was 28 years in the making. The CBA continues to invest in technology, and so we have a new online website and database to go live in the coming fiscal year with added functionality, which we really needed, and both that's for the CBA members and for the staff. So, it's been a wonderful being the treasurer the last two years to serve you. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoy your lunch. Congratulations, Steve. Thanks, Bryce. And last but not least, Joe Stone is going to give us a report from our election committee. The Election Committee hereby reports to the Chicago Bar Association that other than the nominations made by the nominating committee, no nominations were made for any office or for membership on the Board of Managers to be filled at the annual election of 2018. Therefore, pursuant to Article 8, Section 8.7 of the Bylaws of the Association, the Election Committee casts the vote of the members of the Association for the nominees selected by the nominating committee. And they are, for second vice president, Mary Ann Ahmad. For secretary, E. Lynn Grayson. Hold your applause till the end. For treasurer, Timothy S. Tomasek. For members of the board of managers for the term of two years, Sharon L. Eisman, Nina Fain, the Honorable LaShonda A. Hunt, the Honorable Diane Joan Larson, Lori E. Lightfoot, Catherine Caruso Liss, Federico M. Rodriguez, Adam J. Shepard. Under the bylaws of the association, the second vice president automatically succeeds to the office of first vice president. This year, Jesse H. Ruiz, having served during the past year as second vice president, automatically succeeds to the office of first vice president. In addition, the first vice president of the association automatically succeeds to the office of president. This year, Stephen M. Elrod, having served during the past year as first vice president, automatically becomes the president. For the election committee, Anita Alvarez, Honorable Joy Huntingham, Gordon B. Nash Jr., Carrie Peck, and yours truly, Joe Stone, Congratulations to all of you, and now you can applaud. <laughs> Thank you. All right, not done yet. Not done yet. I'd like to introduce some of your friends to you, our outgoing board members who almost all of you know, and as I call your name, please stand up, and if I forget anybody, Lynn Grayson, would you please remind me? Dan Coton, would you please stand up? John Amarillo, Alan Borlock, Tom Durkin, Maurice Grant, Justice Hall, Robert Harris, Michelle Jockner, Pam Meneker, Andrew Vale, and Paul Achmanek. Would you please give these folks a round of applause?
And now, ladies and gentlemen, in a solemn moment, we're going to swear in our new board members. And Justice uh, Burke has graciously agreed to do that. If the new board members would please rise. I don't see you new board members. Raise your hand. And keep your right hand in the air. And repeat after me. I state your name will faithfully carry out my duties as a member of the Chicago Bar Association's Board of Managers to the best of my ability and in accordance with the bylaws of the association. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I'll give you about 6.2 minutes to eat. And I'm back to say um, goodbye. Or as the Beatles song goes, um, you say hello, I say goodbye. Um, the first thing that I want to do is say hello to Steve Elrod, who, but for the Chicago Bar Association, uh, I would not know as well as I do. He is a, um, he's smart and steady, and most importantly, comes from a wonderful family, an absolutely wonderful family. Um, his mom and dad, loving and supportive. His wife, the best. And I gotta tell you, we missed a judge. Judge Elrod was a great friend of so many of us. So many of us knew him. He was such a great person and such a great judge. But I guarantee you he's with us today. I guarantee you he's with us. He's watching it all. Steve is an accomplished and experienced lawyer at Holland and & Knight and a real leader of the firm and of the organized bar. His resume speaks volumes about his excellent career. And we are so fortunate to have Steve represent us at the Chicago Bar Association. He's a dedicated Chicago Bar Association member and officer, a creative and compassionate and committed member of the bar and a joy to work with. Steve, the Bar Association is going to be in good hands with you, and thank you for accepting this job. So um, I'll see you, um, but before I go, I want to say these things. 50 years ago, Judge, uh, Attorney General Robert Kennedy was only six months after his brother was assassinated, President Kennedy, came to Chicago and gave a speech. And he said, we lawyers must examine the problems which face our society and whose resolution should, cha should challenge us as lawyers. We concentrate too much on the traditional stuff of the law and too little on fundamental changes in our society. Last year, the Chicago Bar Association pushed into new areas away from the traditional stuff of the law, but where your special skills as lawyers provided great help. We studied the future of the practice of law which is undergoing changes, and I need not tell you that. Things are tough out there. It's hard to get clients, and it's harder to keep them. Our stress levels are up, and for some people, the legal system has become, become synonymous for technicalities, obstruction, and staggering expense. What have you done for me today is a much more common refrain for thank you for the job well done. We understand that. So last year, 150 of you, judges, lawyers, and law professors, attended a conference where we studied the future of the practice of law in Chicago. We looked at law school preparation for the practice. Are the young lawyers, are the young law students, the third year law students, ready to hit the ground running? Are they ready to come into your law firm and do the kind of work that the clients expect of them? We looked at inclusion and diversity 
in uh, the law profession workplace. And by that I mean not only women and minorities, but also the five generations of lawyers who are, who are now working together, sometimes talking way past one another. <clears throat> we looked at improving the courts, making them more transparent and easy for people to navigate. We looked at the future of alternative dispute resolution and how it's going to have to go online so that people can go into libraries and mediate cases without coming downtown. And we looked at life in the law and how the stresses are affecting our young lawyers um, with drug addiction and alcohol addiction. And we ended up publishing a, port, a report of 60 pages, which not only detail what I just said, but also detail the solutions and suggested ideas. It's a great place for us to have to begin a continuing dialogue. And you know, that's what a bar association should do make a positive impact on the future of our profession. And last year, we also reached out to help good people who live in bad neighborhoods. Gun violence is an epidemic. Neighborhoods are being ruined. We continued the efforts begun by Dan Coton, my predecessor as president of the Chicago Bar Association, and provided help to those people who really need it. That's a real problem, far from the traditional stuff of the law. 100 of you came to a conference where 20 community service organizations asked you for help for their clients. You volunteered. I'm not talking about help in criminal defense. I'm talking about writing wills, getting divorced, working on housing, figuring out insurance. People who live in those neighborhoods need lawyers just like the people who live in Winnetka and Beverly. And we asked Chief Judge Evans to come with us, to go with us to a church on the south side of Chicago and explain his revolutionary and dramatic new bond program. I went into his office and I made the suggestion. I said, Chief, would you consider doing this? He got up from his chair and started to put on his coat. <laughs> I said, OK, but I have to schedule it first. He couldn't have been more enthusiastic, and he couldn't have been a better presenter when we got out there. And you know who he presented to? Moms in the neighborhood. The same moms who sit in the back of bond court when their children um, are led away in handcuffs who are unable to talk to them. Oh, sure, you say. Well, they should be in jail. They did something horrible. What, what about the mom? A mom is a mom everywhere. And they were delighted to hear from Chief Judge Evans. And we also established a hotline for parents to call whose children have truancy problem and the legal issues that are involved there. As Kennedy said in that speech that I quoted two minutes ago, lawyers, among others, but lawyers bear the responsibility of the two legal systems that are starting to be developed here, one for the wealthy and one for the poor. And you have helped with that gap. You have stepped up to close that gap. Thank you. And that's what a bar association ought to do, assist our neighbors who le need legal help. Last year, we also recognized that mental health issues have become a crisis in our society. Kate Spade and Anthony Bourdain are a great example of what I'm talking about. Listen to this. 55 years ago, the Mental Health Act was passed by Congress in Washington, which was to provide federal funds for community health centers. Only half the centers were built, half were funded, and now the act has gone by the wayside while the problem worsens. A problem far from the traditional stuff of the law, but it's a problem that you can help solve. And so last year, you helped us concentrate on it. We had 200 people, 200 of you, came to our mental health conference, which featured 15 professionals, doctors, lawyers, judges, police officers, psychiatrists, psychologists, and law professors to talk about mental health issues and how they're handled in the justice system, how they're handled in the emergency room, 
how they're handled in hospitals. We studied the procedures involved in involuntary and voluntary commitment. We were addressed by a lawyer who has been in practice for 40 years and suffers terribly from mental health issues, tried to commit suicide himself twice, and we were addressed by a woman who has bipolar disease now and is able to hold down a full-time job, and she told, it, told us what that was like. Following the conference, we have proposed legislation which will help, it, help loved ones, make it easier for loved ones, I should say, uh, learn more from doctors and care providers on the mental health situation of those family members or loved ones who have been committed. And, you know, that's what a bar association ought to do. Address serious current issues affecting our society. And lastly, and by that I mean the last thing I'm going to talk about, not the last thing that we did, we expanded our horizons far outside of Chicago in order to stay relevant in a shrinking world. Uh, our president met uh, with a leader of um, North Korea for the first time ever. The world is shrinking. We were active in a World City Bar Leaders Conference, which is attended by the bar presidents of Rome, London, Barcelona, Tokyo, Paris, Shanghai, Warsaw, and 10 other countries. And in September, that World Bar Leaders Conference is going to be held in Chicago. We signed a friendship agreement with the Rome Bar Association. We had a wonderful reception for the chief judge of the um, Ireland Supreme Court. And last week, we had a conference with the Montreal Bar Association, which talked about trade issues, which are all over the front page of the paper now, and the concern that the things that are happening to trades and tariff are going to cause a recession. And that's what a bar association ought to do. Be substantive and versatile enough to broaden its reach outside Chicago to stay relevant to our times and for our members. So I'm Judge Tom Mulroy, president of the Chicago Bar Association, and I'll miss saying that because every time I did, I thought of you, our members, Lawyers who stand against oppression, who defend the integrity of the courts, who represent the last and the least and the lost of our society, you are really the wall that protects our democ democracy and our way of life. And you didn't cost 25 billion, and nobody can crawl over you. The big guy in Romeo and Juliet wrote, parting is such sweet sorrow. And it is, saying goodbye is sad. But it's sweet for me to be able to remember the fun that I had with you over the last 12 months. This year was like Dorothy's trip to Oz for me. And when I arrived and pulled back the curtain, who was at the controls? but Terry Murphy. <laughs> so, from the Wiz, the updated Wizard of Oz, the lyrics of a song sung by Alfaba are my closing. So let me say before we part, so much of me is made of what I learned from you. You'll be with me like a handprint on my heart. And now, whatever way our stories end, I know you have rewritten mine by being my friend. You are the Chicago Bar, and I am Judge Mulroy, former president of the Chicago Bar. Thank you so much. 
I now have the absolute unmitigated joy of giving the Lincoln gavel to my dear friend Steve Elrod, whom Judge Justice Burke will swear in. Okay. Stephen. Yes. <clears throat> Please repeat after me. I, Stephen Elrod. I, Stephen Elrod. Will faithfully execute my duties. Will faithfully execute my duties. As president of the Chicago Bar Association. As president of the Chicago Bar Association. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. And in accordance. And in accordance. With the bylaws of the association. With the bylaws of the association. Congratulations, Mr. President. Thank you, Justice Berg. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Wow, um, I am very humbled to have been serenaded by the, <laughs> by the bar show, my idols, a group that I've watched for the 38 years that I have been practicing and that uh, it's a club I can't possibly join because I can't sing, but they are phenomenal. I I'm humbled by the number of people that are here Yet I do want to call the National Park Service and say this is the largest crowd for an inauguration ever, period. Uh, in the rain. Judge Mulroy will be a really tough act to follow. He championed so many causes and accomplished so much during his term. He highlighted them and what will likely be the cornerstone of the Mulroy administration, that conference and the resulting white paper on the future of the legal profession, a project on which I fully intend to build. Thank you, Judge Mulroy, for that. But the trait, the trait for which Judge Mulroy will be best remembered and appreciated was the speed and efficiency with which he conducted meetings, lunches, conferences, and receptions. He prided himself on time management, adjourning meetings on time or even before the scheduled end time, keeping the pace fast and efficient. In fact, the judge was so efficient that I think he actually successfully completed his presidential term last March. <laughs> Um, we have a few tokens, a few gifts for Judge Mulroy to honor him and to thank him for his invaluable contributions to the Bar Association. Behind this curtain, I don't think Terry Murphy will be there. But um, first, Judge, and you can take that this is a stopwatch um, <laughs> that those of us that bill by the hour will <laughs> have, have appreciated this past year, you getting us out Excellent. of our non-billable time very, um, very swiftly. <laughs> Second, we know, we know, Judge, that you are a, a Cubs fan and that you've been a lifelong Cubs fan. We know also that you're a winner. So we, we have provided you oh, with a yes. W flag yes. of your own. Yes. Great present. And this beautiful picture to remind you of that wonderful night in November 2016 oh, great. with Anthony Rizzo great. And, and Chris Ryan. Love it. But those who know Judge Mulroy know that he has a penchant for pens, engraved pens. Every event that we went to had an engraved pen with Judge Mulroy's name on it. <laughs> they weren't very expensive pens. But we now have your own very nice engraved pen oh, for you, great. Judge Mulroy. Thank you, Steve. <clears throat> and finally, your own gavel. This is from the Bar Association as well, Judge. Um, this is for you to thank you for the wonderful service great. that you provided to our organization. Oh, thank you very much, Steve. Thank you very much. I am honored to be on this dais with Supreme Court Justices Burke, Kilbride, and Neville, 
Um, I'm honored to be on this dais with Chief Judges Wood, Castillo, and Evans, Judge Bauer, Judge Wright. I'm also honored to serve in a position that was once held by legends of the Chicago legal profession, the past presidents of the Bar Association. Thank you, there are so many of them here today. Thank you all for being here. I'm also honored to share this experience with my own family of Chicago Bar Association members. My son, Daniel Elrod, my nephew, David Lakin, my cousins, Barry Shepard and Adam Shepard, who is now a member of the Board of Managers, and my cousin, Joshua Glazoff. It means a lot that they are all here today. <laughs> However, there are three individuals who most influenced my career in the law that are not here today. They're no longer alive, but their impact on me lives on. They taught me the importance of being a good lawyer, but they also inspired my love of the legal profession and taught me how important it is for the members of our profession to help others. In many ways, they guided me to where I stand today. First, my state and local government law professor at Northwestern Law School, Dawn Clark Netsch. And my co-professor when I became an adjunct professor of that same class. Professor Netsch would close her, the final session of every semester by saying to her students, so I've introduced you to the wonderful world of state and local government. Now get out there and live it. Make laws, challenge laws. I don't care how you get involved, just get involved. Second is the founder of Holland and Knight, the law firm at which I practice, Chesterfield Smith, who admonished all of the attorneys at our firm to be somebody by doing good. Chesterfield was a Florida lawyer, but was primarily responsible for opening the Chicago office of Holland and Knight by bringing the, sm the small boutique firm at which I was practicing with others here in this room into the global firm that is Holland and Knight. That was back in 2000. Chesterfield taught us then that a lawyer has a unique opportunity and a unique advantage to make a difference in the lives of those less fortunate, to be somebody by doing good. The admonishments of Chesterfield Smith and Dawn Clark Netsch resonated with me from the moment I first heard them. But the person who had the most, and perhaps the greatest impact on my life as a lawyer had no admonishments, no mantras, no lectures. Rather, he taught me by his actions. That was my dad, Richard J. Elrod. He, he, he was a man of courage who never ever let setbacks get in his way or keep him down and he was dealt a pretty major setback when he was just 11 years out of law school. He was a fighter when all odds were stacked against him. He pushed past the physical barriers that stood in his way at every juncture and lived a wonderful and enriched life, one that was dedicated to volunteering and serving the public. I learned by following his lead. I truly believe that I am who I am and my professional life is what it is because of these three individuals. Now, while Chesterfield Smith was the president of the American Bar Association and Dawn Clark Netsch was very active in the Chicago Bar Association, neither of those two mentors of mine knew that I would one day be president of this association. But my dad did, or, or at least he thought he did, which makes today somewhat bittersweet. My dad always encouraged me to get involved in CBA leadership and hoped that one day I would become president. He lived long enough to see the beginning of my path. In April 2014, shortly before he passed away, I won a contested election for the Office of Treasurer of the Chicago Bar Association. 
I went to visit my dad in the hospital um, it, and, and tell him the good news. It was getting late. Um, he was in his hospital bed with the nurse at his side. He was failing quickly. I whispered to him in excitement uh, that I had been elected treasurer of the Bar Association. He nodded and smiled. I wasn't sure he understood, but as I was leaving, I heard him say with great pride to, to the nurse, that's my son, the president of the Chicago <laughs> Bar Association. Now, I knew, I knew, I knew full well that I would still have to prove myself, make myself worthy, pay my due, serve my time before I had any hope of being elected president. But I didn't have the heart to correct him, and he died a few days later. So I set myself on the path to getting here, and well, Dad, it's finally true. I made it. <laughs> so what do I hope to accomplish now that I am the president? Well, several of you up here know uh, this already, but I am on a mission. I've been on a mission to restore and advance the mission of the Chicago Bar Association. I'm going to do that through focusing on three key areas where lawyers in our association can make a difference in our society. Areas where, in the words of Don Clark Neck and Chesterfield Smith, lawyers can get involved and do good. First, through civics or civic education. We live in troubling times where schools are cutting civic education from their curriculum because they have no one to teach it and where all Americans are bearing witness daily to the horrible conduct displayed by our nation's leaders when debating controversial issues. Students need to learn about civic engagement, how to understand, engage, and debate important issues that impact our lives. And they need to learn to appreciate that people can have differing views and differing perspectives and still get along. We lawyers can help. We can get involved in programs that provide civic educations. These lawyer in the classroom programs allow students to learn about constitutional principles and about how to be civically engaged, informed, and responsible citizens. It's great community service work. The Federal Bar Association has a program at Legal Prep High School and the WITS program working in the schools engages large law firms and corporate law departments to partner with Chicago public schools. And the organization that excels at this, the one that is near and dear to my heart, and that of Chief Judge Wood and Chief Judge Castillo, both of whom sit on the board with me, is the Constitutional Rights Foundation Chicago. It's a nonpartisan organization that has incredible civics and law-related education programs and has lawyers placed in classrooms throughout the Chicago metropolitan area and particularly in inner city schools. My hope is for the Chicago Bar Association to partner with these and other similar organizations to empower as many of our lawyers as possible to get out into the schools to help students become responsible, participatory, and justice-oriented members of our society. My, and I know Maggie Hickey and Andrew Vale are, are, are applauding that one. My second but closely related area of focus will be on civility. And I know this is a hot button topic for you, Justice Burke, not just by and among school students, but by and among us. The way in which we lawyers talk to each other, negotiate, draft pleadings, argue in court, has reached an all-time low. I recognize that we are a profession of advocates, but the rancorous, vitriolic, acidic tone of our debate has become, well, uncivil and the tweets and missives that we get daily from our leaders in Washington only make things worse. We need to do something about this. We can be zealous advocates of our clients without being cantankerous. 
The core mission of the Chicago Bar Association is, and I quote, to establish and maintain the honor and the dignity of the profession of law. Our mission should be to uphold this mission by always conducting ourselves civilly, respectfully, and professionally in the courtroom, in the boardroom, in our law offices, whenever we engage with each other. I would like to see the Chicago Bar Association be a leader in recalibrating the way in which lawyers communicate and bring back civility to our profession. My, my final goal also begins with a C, the promotion of collegiality within our association. We are an association of lawyers, but we've made it difficult for us to associate with each other. Another core mission of the Chicago Bar Association, taken directly from our mission statement, is the cultivation of social and professional relationships among members. Well, through an interesting and ironic twist of fate, we have actually allowed technology and social media to become a barrier to our social engagement. No doubt, technology and social media are, are vital to our profession, um, but we've become so reliant on them that we have perhaps unwittingly practically far foreclosed any opportunity to interact with each other. We've cut out collegiality. Nowhere is it more appar apparent than here at the Bar Association. Years ago, we had dining halls that were filled with lawyers having lunch. Our building across the street was packed daily with, uh, with, with committee attendees. But now, all of our meetings are streamed live. They're online. We've invested a significant amount of, of money to have one of the most technologically advanced web-based CLE programs in the world at this Bar Association. And that provides a tremendous convenience for our members. I'm proud of it. But they never have to leave their desk. It's great service, I get it. But in reality, we've become victims of our own success. We never see each other. We're missing something vital. In-person interaction allows for better learning experiences, better networking opportunities, and a better appreciation for the world of law. The new board of managers and I, and we met yesterday on this, are gonna challenge you to buck this trend. Our building across the street is one of the most beautiful and functional, and now debt-free, uh, buildings in the country. We're not gonna abandon the online streaming but our mission is to get you to attend a committee meeting in person. So that's what I'm gonna focus on this year, civics, civility, and collegiality. We have a great year ahead of us, great things planned. As, as Judge Mulroy indicated, for the first time ever, and thanks to the groundwork of past president Aurora Austriaco, um, in September we will be the host city for the World City Bar Leaders Annual Conference, first time in Chicago. The, and that's, that's going to be a wonderful thing. The phenomenal CBA bar show will be performed in late November, early December. I strongly encourage every one of you to attend with me. It'll be great. And, right, guys? And in April, the annual Continuing Legal Education Abroad program will journey to the country of Israel with stops in Amsterdam and Petra, Jordan. I encourage you to join me on that trip. I look forward to working with the newly constituted Board of Managers. It's an awesome group. And an incredible team of officers that includes Jesse Ruiz, Mariam Ahmad, Lynn Grayson, Tim Tomasek, and of course, Judge Mulroy. And a phenomenal staff led by Terry Murphy and assisted by Beth McMean. Before I close, I want to provide my deepest thanks to certain people who made this and the upcoming year possible for me. First, my partners, colleagues, and staff at Holland and Knight. This firm is a major Bar Association supporter. We've had two presidents of the American Bar Association, and I am the fourth partner at our firm to lead a, to be president of a major city Bar Association. They're here in force today, uh, and I truly appreciate all of you always being there for me.
my mother, Marilyn Elrod, the matriarch of our family, and my life mentor. <clears throat> My children, Elizabeth and Russell, Daniel and Allie, and my grandchildren who are not here today, my love for all of you never ends. And my wife, my rock, my compass, my best friend for 38 years of marriage, I love you, Donna. Thank you all for enabling me to take this journey. I promise I will not let you down. Benedict. Oh, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Judge Wright, we close. May I say thank you to uh, Judge Tom Melroy, uh, Steve Elrod, our president, and Terry Murphy for my presence today. I can assure you that the reason that I'm here at this hour is because they made me last. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm glad I'm here. May the love of God be above you, to overshadow you, beneath you to uphold you, before you to guide you, behind you to protect you, close beside you and within you, to make you able for all things, and to reward your faithfulness with the joy and peace which the world cannot give, neither can it take away. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom be the glory now and evermore. Amen. Amen. And now is my first action as president. I hereby adjourn this annual meeting. Thank you all for being here.